Hi everybody, it's Jessica. In today's crash course video, I am covering the ins and outs of Google Forms in under five minutes. If you would like to learn more about Google Forms, definitely check out the Google Teacher Training Center. So here I am at drive.google.com. I'll click the new button and then Google Forms. The first thing I'll need to do is rename my form. Let's call it chapter five quiz. And then I'll leave really good directions for my students. Notice that the file name didn't rename itself. If I just simply click up there uh, with a single click, it will rename to whatever I called my quiz. Now, the very first question that I usually put in is, what, what is the password to this quiz? That way I can verbally deploy when this quiz gets taken. My students won't start without me or outside of class. So then it defaulted to short answer, but what I need to click are these three dots next to required and then select response validation. So now I need, what I'm looking for is that my students can only enter in a certain set of numbers to be able to go to the next question. So I want that number to be equal to a particular number. Let's put in one, two, three, four, five. And if they get it wrong, I'll say, ask me for the password. And I'm going to make this question required so they can't skip it. And now I can continue to add a page break so it'll go to the next page before they see additional questions. So I'll say this is, this is the actual quiz and then start answering or adding my questions. Note that I can add in a wide range of questions and Google, by the way, will try to grade for me my multiple choice. Just kind of keep that in mind as you're designing your uh, assessments. And you better make sure that the questions are required if indeed you want them to, for sure, they have to answer these questions. So here I am just building my sections and maybe I want a few sections to have more than one question and I can add another section. So here we go. I just need to make sure I rename my section because I do think it looks distracting to have it say untitled. And I better make sure that all these questions are indeed required. Notice that for these questions too, I could have added in photos. So not just for the question, but also for my options. So if I wanted my students to say, select from a series of pictures, based on my question or vice versa, I gave them a picture and they had to identify which label was correct, whatever it is, I can do that thanks to Google Forms. Notice here I can also add in a YouTube video for a particular section if I want them to watch a short video and then answer a series of questions. I can also import questions. So I always ask my students, what section are you in? I have nine sections and I'm not retyping that. I can import those questions from a previous quiz. Let's look at settings. So if I click on the settings gear here, I can restrict it to just people within my domain, which I do for my students. But if I'm asking for feedback outside of the school, I definitely uncheck that. And then I make sure I don't have a password and that my first three questions are something like first name, last name, email or phone number. That way I can collect that data if indeed I needed to know that information. I also don't let my students resubmit so I'll go ahead and click save and I'm going to click that check that gear icon again and go over to presentation. I can shuffle my question order, but there's a consequence to doing that because my first question was the password. So I do not want to shuffle my question order. Note that I can also make this a quiz. If I do that, I'm able to let Google grade. I'll have a chance to set an answer key and they will grade my multiple choice questions. Notice by default, they will release the correct answers. So if you forget that, there's a good chance that you might see a little grade inflation by the end of the day. So I'm going to go ahead and click save and then click send. Notice here, this is how I'm going to deploy my quiz. I'll click send and then the uh, the uh, click uh, the clip here for the link and then shorten the URL, copy and paste that into Google and I'm ready to rock and roll. Now, when you go to view your data, it is possible to view your responses here or turn it into a spreadsheet. Woo. Okay, that was a crash course in the ins and outs of Google Forms in under five minutes. Again, if you want to learn more, you can follow me and ask me questions on Twitter at Jay Brogley or consult the Google Teacher Training Center.